Hey, this is Dr. Corey Glenn with Blue Sky Bio, and I'm going to show in this video how you can import a post-operative CT once the implant has been placed into your pre-operative planning so that you can compare the plan versus where the implant actually came out. But real quickly before I do that, this was a case that uh, uh, someone sent to me recently. They had just purchased the fully guided Crestal Sinus Lift Kit that Blue Sky offers. Uh, it's a guided sinus lift kit. And uh, I thought this was kind of interesting and worth showing because this was the first sinus lift he had ever done with this kit. And I thought it was a really impressive result. So let me just go through real quick and show you the implant positioning. Uh, here you can see this is in the site of the first molar. And now if you're wondering why, why even bother learning sinus lifts, this is an incredibly common scenario. You know, the maxillary first molar is the most commonly lost tooth in the mouth. And I was in a lecture one time, I can't verify the, the statistic, but it was said that if you are not comfortable doing at least minor sinus elevations, then about 30% of the implants that walk into your office are gonna be off the table from the very start. Now that's a significant amount of, of money to leave on the table, and this is just not that difficult of a procedure, and now having that guided makes it even that much easier. So again, you can see the, uh, the positioning and if we were to measure, you know, the, the height of bone from crest to uh, the sinus floor, it's about five millimeters or so. Okay, so he's got a uh, 10 millimeter implant plant here, so that's five millimeters of lift. Again, a very common scenario. So let me show you the post-operative CT. And you can actually see here that I went ahead and segmented the bone so that you could actually see the full uh, dome there. I mean, just so that you can verify that I'm not lying. I'll turn that off. But you can see the dome of bone that's present here. So a very significant lift. And again, very first time for this person to ever use this kit. Um, and I thought it was an impressive result. In fact, you can even see that as far back as uh, the posterior wall that the sinus got elevated, uh, there's no bone graft back there, but I guess it's just the irrigation elevated that up. So again, really simple. The fact a first time user can do this is pretty impressive. Uh, so I think you should check out that kit, and I've got some YouTube videos on that. Um, so with that said, let's go ahead and show what I was originally going to show, which is how to import the post-operative CT. So we've got the pre-op plan here. This is the normal plan that you could have reopened from Blue Sky. And what we're going to do is go up to File, Import Dicoms. And actually, you should be in model editing mode to do this. So I'm changing over to model editing and now we'll see import DICOMs. And so this is not a true function of Blue Sky Plan, so we've got to do a bit of hacking here. We're gonna call this a scan appliance. Even though it's not a scan appliance, I know it's just a post-operative CT, but we're gonna call it that and go ahead and upload this. So this is that file. You see the post-op uh, CT, we'll import it. And it's not simply, it's not as simple as just importing it and everything stitched. Remember your patient positioning within the machine is gonna be different. They might, uh, you know, be open or closed more than one scan. So we're gonna to have to take a different approach. So I'm just clicking okay. And it's going to bring up the st uh, scan appliance window, which would typically be used if you've done a dual scan. You know, something like a, uh, uh, denture with some radiographic markers on it and you want to pull that in so you can see your implant positions. Okay, so we don't need a whole lot of this excess information. I'll get about halfway up the sinus and I'm cutting most of the mandible off just to limit the field of view a bit and I'll bring that into about the teeth. So click OK once you've limited the field of view. Okay, so here we go. So again, this is typically for uh, use in pulling in a denture with radiographic markers. You would have the patient wearing it in one scan and then the, the denture alone in the other scan. So you've got to think about when you're telling it it's a scan appliance that you're importing, what it's trying to do here is it's trying to reduce the density in both of these top windows such that mainly just radiographic markers show up. And then what would typically happen in the bottom left is that this should look like just a full 3D volume rendering of that denture, okay? And that way it would stitch based on the points, it would match everything up, and then you would be good. Now, obviously this is not a scan appliance and we're again hacking this. And so you should notice that you've got some sliders under here and you've got uh, the ability to put in values for this. 
And so what I want to do, again, the software lowered the density enough that it was trying to make radiographic markers show up. That's why only metal and gutta percha are shown here. So I'm going to reduce the density here, and I'll, you'll have to play with it on your computer, but I'm going to drop it to 1600 and the software is going to reconfigure this. Now be aware this can take, depending on your computer, up to 30 seconds for this to process. I'll time lapse it, so don't get the impression my computer is that fast. Uh, okay, so that one's already done. And my goal here is that I'm trying to just get this to where the teeth show up adequately. I think I could go a little bit more. Let's drop down to 1300. There we go, and I like the appearance of that. The teeth have their full shapes. And so remember, this is the same patient, same volume that was scanned, and so the settings should be pretty similar. So I'm just going to change this to 1300 as well. Okay, so the renderings look very similar here. So now we're ready to stitch them. Obviously, you can see down here in your stitch preview that these are not matched up. And so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to actually go old school and stitch this by points. If you grab right here in the middle, you can maximize these more. And when I'm doing this, I'm trying to orient things in the same relative position and the same level of zoom. And that will assist you in picking the ideal stitching points. And it's also very important that you be as accurate as possible when doing this. I mean, you know, microns matter. So I'm looking for really distinct stitching points, things like incisal edges, uh, things like cusp tips, um, you know, notches on the teeth, things like that that are going to show up. You can't really use things like gum line because, you know, the gum line uh, may or may not show up very well. On occasion, you'll see some good root anatomy that you might be able to use, uh, but usually I'm looking for cusp tips and incisal edges. So let's put one, I'm holding shift and left clicking, and then I'm gonna go to the exact same spot on this model, shift and left click. And I'm gonna look for five or six of these spread around the arch as far apart as I can get them so that we get the full arch stitched and not just one area. So let's look at this model And let's go right on the peak of that cusp. And then we need to do some on the other side. And this side is more difficult just because of the amount of scatter. But again, since we're scanning the exact same objects, the scatter should turn out pretty similar in both of these. And in fact, you can see that little divot in the back of the tooth is present on both. And so what I'm going to do is just place a point right on that corner, which is common in both of those. And then as I go forward, let's see what uh, area shows up adequately on these premolars. I'd like to get one more tooth in the premolar spot. And it looks like just the top of this cusp tip is good on both of these. Okay, so that's five points. And what I'll do, you don't, don't click OK yet. We're not ready to jump forward to that. But what I am going to do is come down here to the bottom and hit Align just by points. So ignore everything else and just align it to my points and then hit Update. And now hopefully you can see in the bottom right-hand screen that these are very closely superimposed over one another. You can see how the colors bleed through one another on all different sides, not just from one side or the other. So I'm confident in my stitch now, and that's important. We've got to get that right, other this, otherwise this whole process doesn't work. Now the last step, in a, uh, a typical dual scan of a scan appliance, this bottom left window, again, represents the denture, and you would want it the full volume because it needs to make a solid SDL. Again, we're hacking this. We don't want that. What I would like to do here is raise this uh, slider up to the point where that implant appears very clearly. Okay. And so now you can see that the implant appears uh, very clear. Now you could take this um, as far to the right as you want where only metal would show up. You can do that. I personally like to leave some of these teeth on here to, uh, to kind of be able to verify the stitch. Some people might even want to take it to the exact same density as these other two scans. And you know, we can see that at 1300, this scan looks 
like so. So let's just match that in this example. Okay, so bottom left window, however you have that bottom left window looking, when you push OK, that is going to be turned into an STL and imported into the case, stitched in this position right here. So if you don't like the model density, you know, if you wanted maybe only the implant to show up or only the crowns in the implant, um, or if you wanted to maybe evaluate your bone volume, you might want to turn the density up more to where you can actually see the dome of bone. Um, so anyway, right here for just evaluating the implant accuracy, I can see this implant very clearly with the healing abutment. This should be perfectly fine. So now I'm ready to hit OK. Software is going to turn that into an STL now and bring it into the case. Okay, so now you see that this is uh, called a scan appliance. You can see that it's stitched in place. And I'm going to change this uh, to that red color that we were just seeing just because it shows up pretty distinctly. And now what I can do is turn on next to this the hint. So the hint is just this model outline of that STL. And now if I was to center myself on the virtual implant, we can now compare the actual position to the planned position. Okay, so you can see depth is dead on. Uh, the positioning is a little bit towards the anterior by, you know, maybe half a millimeter. It's not even a full thread width. Um, and, you know, when you're doing these in a... Uh, you know, minimal amount of bone, it's always possible to lean on it one way or another and go slightly off course, but that's incredibly good. And then if we look at it from a mesial to distal view, you can see again that we are within the, the confines of that planned implant, maybe one or two degrees going more towards the nasal passages, but again, an incredible amount of accuracy for the, uh, uh, the positioning of this implant. So that's how you would import the uh, post-operative CT and compare the implant positions. Again, if you wanted to go a step further, you could uh, segment out in that, uh, that other case that I had open. You know, if you jump over here to the, the one where I've done this, you could just open this as a standalone case and actually segment the uh, bone graft and then import that and so that's what I've done here and you can actually see the level of the graft that was accomplished and if I was to go in the 3D windows you can again see how large that graft is so that's about a cc of bone that's in there and that's an incredible lift for a uh, crestal approach I mean you could have placed uh, a 14 millimeter implant in there with all the room that was gained so great kit if you're looking for it, go to the Blue Sky Bio uh, shop online page and then go to instrumentation and you'll see the guided sinus lift kit. And here you see the kit. This is completely compatible to our keyless uh, guided surgery system. So if you're planning it in the software, all you're going to do is just tell the software in the uh, implant planning stage that your drill kit is the fully guided surgical kit and that will set all the parameters for the guided sinus lift kit as well. Um, you would just simply measure again we measured five millimeters preoperatively so you would expect to break through with either the five or the six millimeter drill. So it's a very intuitive kit. Um, anyway I hope you found both those things useful.